might be societal benefits uh, like an improved engagement from sci uh, of science and society. That's our strong conviction. Uh, concretely, we uh, offer to you two kinds of toolboxes, a static one that contains a lot of knowledge uh, codified in, uh, in form of a huge big uh, reports where you find a collection of uh, several hundred indicators uh, that might be, that they are grouped so that it might help you uh, just to, to pick out those indicators which you think uh, that might be useful for your evaluation of the gender equality plans. And we have, and I think this is the most interesting uh, issue for you, maybe in the future, uh, you can use a toolbox uh, and as a starting point, you may, may uh, define an objective you have for a specific instrument and you will receive a certain suggestions for suitable instruments or if you start with a concrete instrument you have already implemented, we suggest you suitable indicators to measure a certain uh, impact pathway. So the overall logic behind uh, the process of, for, for different types of measures we developed these, uh, these kind of uh, log frames, how we call it, it's a rather s simplified model of uh, starting with objectives, uh, then we look at inputs given into the system, then we look at implementation activities and define outputs, outcomes and impacts, so short-term effects, mid-term effects and long-term effects on your target groups, but also maybe beyond. Um, this is, yes, what we offer to you. I showed you at the end this uh, website. Uh, generally, we think that our approach and the F40 toolbox is useful to structure and uh, inspire your own thinking uh, when you intend to evaluate uh, a gender equality plan. It supports and guides choices of re relevant indicators and uh, we are aware that usually <laughs> an input given into a system is not a linear process, uh, but this toolbox also offers you the opportunity to, to integrate context factors which might support or hinder the efficiency of your uh, interventions. Um, this approach we had, um, yes, allows partly to open the black uh, box and we also give you some suggestions on, on how gender equality might uh, have impact on research innovation outcomes and yes, outcomes. <laughs> so finally you see here at the, our website, if 40 uh, www, if 40 eu uh, you find uh, the link to this concrete tool and we would be happy if you would just try that. <laughs> and we hope, uh, and, and, and this toolbox will have a certain sustainability in terms of that uh, York will overtake it uh, after the official project end. And we will have that uh, for free, accessible, for more than four weeks, <laughs> I guess. I would say uh, until the end of, of, of next year. Uh, and then, then we have to see how the new <laughs> group for society is in supporting and, uh, and in financing the, the, this, uh, yes, the efforts needed by, by the Spanish team. Thank you very much, Susan. Um, <laughs> thanks a lot. Uh, the next to take the floor uh, is uh, Lut Merget from Yellow Window and the GE Academy project. Uh, she will bring us to the knowledge and capacity building uh, dimension of sustainability. Lut is the director and senior consultant at Yellow Window. She holds a PhD in management sciences and her areas of expertise include research project man management, gender in EU research policy, and gender mainstreaming. She has led various projects related to capacity building for the integration of gender in research, such as the gender in EU funded research, a toolkit, uh, accompanied by uh, 73 training sessions delivered across Europe, uh, the GEAR tool on behalf of EGE and the European Commission, and currently the GE Academy project, just recently kicked off. Thank you, Maria. Yes, um, you might have heard, and Mina Starifa announced it this morning, mentioned it also, the Gender Equality Academy project is also a SWAFs funded project that was launched in January of this year, and it will run for three years. We are a consortium of 11 different institutions, and I am the scientific coordinator of the Gender Equality Academy. 
And in this academy, we will develop and offer to the research community a whole range of training, capacity building concepts, formats on different topics and for different target groups. So the purpose of the commission with this topic and with this project is to provide to the research community um, a, a package of training materials that um, respect a set of quality standards and also a, a pool of trainers that are available for delivering these sessions across Europe and to help strengthen the capacity in the research institutions in Europe that want to engage with structural change for gender equality or are busy with structural change for gender equality but miss certain skills or competencies. Um, this project is complementary to the GEAR tool. Yellow Window also developed on behalf of AIGA and the Commission this GEAR tool, which is online at the website of the European Institute for Gender Equality, which is pooling a lot of knowledge, resources, good practices, all kinds of materials that are very useful in the process of structural change for gender equality. But the disadvantage of this platform is that it is like a self-learning tool. You have to explore it, you have to navigate it, and you have to find your way through it to, to pick up what is useful for you. So this Gender Equality Academy will complement the GEAR tool and will bring knowledge and skills to the institutions and the audiences that need it. Um, the first year of the Gender Equality Academy uh, project, which is now running, um, consists of like um, setting the scene, developing the formats, setting the quality standards. Um, we are currently running a needs assessment survey. So on the website of the Gender Equality Academy, which is www.ge-academy.eu, you find the link to the survey and we really call upon your inputs because in this needs assessment survey, we collect the views from all the stakeholders on what their needs are. And on the basis of this inventory, we will define the program for the Gender Equality Academy. So this is now your opportunity to help steer the program of the Gender Equality Academy. Um, do it fast, please, because the survey <laughs> is open till next Monday. So we are a bit under pressure. And so we are still collecting uh, input. And please forward it also in your institutions. We are not collecting institutional views. We are collecting views and needs from individuals. And we are also looking for the needs of equal opportunities, officers, human resources persons, heads of department, persons in managerial positions, also gender trainers. We will also offer train the trainers formats. So we ask people who are interested also in becoming a trainer to make themselves known to the Gender Equality Academy so that we can also invite them to train the trainers activities. Now, why is this also happening? While we are do, we're developing this gear tool for AIGA, we have studied all the gender uh, equality plans that were being implemented in the EU and that had been implemented in the EU with, with funding from the Commission and also other gender equality plans that are being implemented without Commission funding. And what we have seen is that on many of the EU funded projects, people are contracted on the project for the duration of the project. So they build up experience on structural change for gender equality and when the project is finished, the contract is finished, they leave the organization and the expertise leaves the organization with them. So what we are now emphasizing is that capacity is built in the organization and stays in the organization. So we also try to support the institutions to build internal capacity and to help them build and strengthen their own capacity through internal training plans. When needed, we can come in, we can help, and we can support them. But the purpose is also to strengthen their capacity, to build their own capacity, and so that it stays in place and is not, does not evaporate when the, when the project is finished. So I'm, I don't totally agree with my colleague Thomas. 
in the idea that one person can come in and change the system. This is not our, our view. We think that capacity is needed at different levels in different places of the organization and that together the system can, can, uh, can be changed. So I'll keep it here for now, I think. Thank you. Thank you, Lut. Final input for this first round uh, will be from uh, Jörg Müller. Uh, from uh, Uni Universita d'Oberta de Catalunya and the Act on Gender Project. Uh, Jörg is uh, currently at the Internet Indis Interdisciplinarity Institute in, uh, of uh, the, university, uh, the Open University in Catalonia in Barcelona. He is part of the Gender and ICT Research Program. Uh, he has a PhD in Communication and uh, European Graduate uh, Schools in Switzerland uh, and a degree in Sociology and Computer Sciences, so interdisciplinary profile. He has been coordinating uh, the Genport uh, project in FP, under FP7. Uh, we all, almost all of us, we know about that. Uh, currently, has been also coordinating the uh, JEDI uh, Horizon 2020 project, project on gender diversity impact. And uh, uh, at the moment, uh, this is why um, uh, we decided it would be very nice to have your input here. The ACT Communities of Practices for Accelerating Gender Equality and Institutional Change in Research. Uh, Horizon 2020 project. We reflected on the fact that uh, each organization built an uh, internal community of practices and the consortium worked as a sort of community of practice itself. And so we look at what you are going to do uh, in ACT as a potential sustainability um, tool. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me to this panel. Uh, as you know, I'm uh, coordinating the ACT project, which has been mentioned a couple of times now here, so there are lots of expectations attached to this project. I also brought you some flyers if you want to pass them around and uh, have at least a reference uh, to the project and to the project website. And I think um, what's interesting about the ACT project on the one hand is that it's the ideal case in terms of uh, we had the gen port project and then this call came up where we could integrate uh, the Genport platform in order to give it continuity inside another project. So our idea is now for this communities of practice uh, project that we build up on and use uh, the Genport portal in the background as our repository for all the resources and uh, so continue the lifespan of this project at least for another uh, three years. Um, we went. We were at the same stage that uh, Thomas described towards the end of Genport, like panicking, and um, how can we, how can we guarantee the survival of, of this uh, project? And I think, on the one hand, it was very difficult because, on the one hand, the Re European Commission doesn't allow you to actually make a business plan while the project is alive because you can't earn money with some with uh, a project which has received public funding. So you can't really start getting money that would be used for making it sustainable until the end of the project. And then it's almost too late because people move on. On the other hand, I think it's also a challenge because most of us were working as uh, researchers or gender equality practitioners inside these institutes. And we are not really business people where we would all of a sudden uh, dedicate 100% of our time or even more. And this is what I needed, I think, to convert an idea. And we had lots of ideas the Genport Consortium, but to really convert it then, implement it, uh, search for the financing, mm -hmm. and convert this into something which is really sustainable financially. Uh, luckily, our university, uh, the Open University of Catalonia, stepped in and they financed like six months, one person, half, half time person, who would, uh, you know, keep the activity going on the Genport portal. And in the meantime, we were applying for the ACT project, building explicitly uh, the use of the portal into this new project. Now, for the ACT project, I think it's, it's a double-sided uh, sword. Uh, uh, how do you say it? A double-sided double cuts both ways. So on the one hand, communities of practice uh, have been introduced, I think, with the specific idea to make this sustainable. But... Um, <laughs> 
the difficult part of this is that it actually um, counts on people that are motivated, that put in uh, their own resources, actually, that are engaged in gender equality because uh, they are convinced, they are activists, and they put a lot in their own energy and uh, drive the transformation <coughs> of the institute based on that. And I think it's a very dangerous concept, on the other hand, because... I mean, without resources, you know, uh, I think it's difficult to mix, to, uh, to misunderstand sustainability as how can we do what we did before, but now without the resources. <laughs> so I think this is really dangerous because it doesn't work. We need the resources and then we can think about, you know, how we do it the best way, the most efficient way. And, uh, and if we build technology or use technology to make it in an open way that it can use and adapt in the, in the best way by as many different user scenarios that we can think of and different disciplines, all that we can talk about. But uh, I think without a baseline financing of at least one person in an institution that stays at the institution, I think we can't really talk about sustainability. Thanks a lot, um, uh, Jörg. Um, I would just... Um, leave the floor now to you for your considerations uh, on uh, how to sustain uh, already initiated uh, processes of uh, institutional change, um, reacting to the different valuable inputs that we got from our speakers. We are all tired. Clearly, it's the, <laughs> the final <laughs> panel session. Uh, I, I, could, I can open. Okay, there must be. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Just, just a quick note because indeed I am tired, like many people here. Um, about sustainability, I think we, um, from what I've, I've captured <laughs> in the discussion, uh, remotely, it's uh, we, we we discussed a lot about um, um, how to how to make uh, gender equality agenda in general sustainable. Uh, by uh, establishing the mechanisms that will possibly uh, last over the project by securing the resources or capitalizing in a clever way upon the resources that have been uh, um, put to the benefit of the project thanks to the youth funding once it's over, and that's a big question. Um, I would add as, as well, uh, again, um, hacking uh, sort of uh, existing procedures bodies, uh, processes of decision making or consultation or like social dialogue within universities, things which actually pre-existed to the project and that over a project you can fuel with a different content, meaning, orientation or capacity as a unique committee of guarantee in Italy or as a, a collective agreement in a, in a number of countries or as a mission statement of a university because indeed this will not <coughs> uh, um, transfer the whole agenda and plan you had before uh, beyond the project but it will uh, uh, transfer part of it in places where it will be difficult to remove and from where it will, uh, possible, it will be possible to, uh, to move on. And another uh, uh, remark, because it comes also out from several uh, presentations, uh, to, to capitalize on this type of project. Uh, the, the, the case can be built during the project for um, decision makers that you, you can really um, move to other initiative thanks to those ones, thanks to the gender equality agenda. You, you can possibly secure uh, uh, um, more efficiently uh, and with more content the human resource strategy for research uh, uh, quality level, let's say. Uh, you, you can pursue a national uh, uh, award for gender equality in the, in the workplace. Uh, you you can be quoted as, a, as as an example and and move on 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 different uh, aspects uh, because you you uh, you thought in advance that you could possibly do it from the gender equality strategy you established. Thank you. 
it's it's a, it's a triggering question. Uh, please react because it's uh, it's true that we tend to look at sustainability as maintaining what we have done, you know, really like a survival strategy. But actually, in three years of the project, we just set up some initial steps. It would be at the moment to become even more ambitious. I was struck by one of our partners' comment in their sustainability plan in the introductory part. They said, okay, we spent the, 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 few, the, the three years of the project uh, struggling uh, against internal resistances and raising the internal awareness. Now, uh, through, the sustain through the, this sustainability plan, we really uh, feel that we can start the real action. But then you meet a huge resource gap. You don't have uh, or, uh, available uh, national uh, uh, stakeholders uh, ready to support you in most of the cases. Uh, there are no additional EU fundings, and it becomes challenging. Uh, from our own experience, from our own university, I mean, we always had the gender equality as part of the agenda of the university. But the difference came when there was a decision from the top, from the rectorate, really, to create a specific gender equality office who is now in charge of really driving this whole process. So there was always, you know, the discourse going on, more or less present, but not, but in the end, I mean, if there are not no resources and a really a commitment, I mean, that's what we all know, you know, it's like the resource, you need top level commitment. Without that, you can lobby for it, you can try to achieve it, but if you don't get it, I don't, uh, <laughs> I don't know. <coughs> so. What about our partner's view on um, at least what you have heard from our mm, panelists in terms of the existing examples or uh, tools uh, and opportunities that will be uh, offered in view of continuing uh, your gender equality work in your organizations? But have partners, for example, engaged in acts, communities of practice, or are they planning to do it? Or have they been invited? To yes, do I it? was also <laughs> <laughs> when I when I heard <coughs> Thomas, I was I was wondering to what extent you actively reach out beyond your previous pre-existing network to reach newcomers. Mm. There are some limits, of course. Uh, <laughs> as I said, we are about 30 organizations now together. Of course, we would like to expand. Uh, we are, uh, our job in, in ACT is uh, to coordinate uh, between the different uh, um, communities of practice to, to connect them on top. I'm not sure if uh, or how we will do it. <laughs> it will happen, yes, of course, but uh, um, I think that there are some limitations what you can really uh, bring together and uh, at some point you need multiplicators to expand uh, to a wider world outside. Important is that uh, when you do something together, you address the same problems. Uh, you're facing the same resistance, then you can expand and ex uh, exchange uh, experiences, etc. Of course, but ACT is of course not the solution for whole Europe. <laughs> That's clear. I think it's a dangerous. There is a yeah. false expectation as well. I mean. That's what we see now when we set up the communities of practice a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, it's about structural change. Um, mm -hmm. But 
we can't do the same thing that a four-year project with a million or two million euros specifically for structural change mm -hmm. can achieve. I sure. mean, it's clear. So there's some, there's a certain limitation in terms of topic or activities, but at the same time, the whole idea of a community of practice is actually that this is something uh, sustainable because it's the interest of people that are really involved and continue to, you know, work in this process without resources in the end. I mean, mm -hmm. why is this project, I mean, why is this project coming at the end of Horizon 2020 in a way? What's going to happen in Horizon Europe? Is there going to be structural change projects mm -hmm. coming more along? I might, I might add here, it's, it's more a comment and less a question. I mean, the idea to set up this ACT project from the European Commission was, a, was trying to somehow to create sustainability, right? To really build on the work what has been done in all the structural change processes. So there is for sure a will to do it, and now we, we're trying it with an ACT, creating those communities of practices with little resources so maybe we can think about other strategies, right, beside those communities of practices um, and suggest it also to the European Commission. Yeah. I mean, I don't have, have the answer. I just want to raise, right, the question, what are other ways? We're trying it with the communities of practices, but there must be other ways. Yeah, I think that we have to somehow relate the discussion we had in the previous panel with this one. And I think that uh, a key role will be played by Informatics Europe and uh, SEM, uh, possibly also by IEEE, uh, in the sense that uh, I think that uh, at individual level, at professional level, but uh, in particular, uh, I think about Informatics Europe as uh, it uh, uh, as, a, as a component of the department, so it's a st at a structural level, uh, there is an action which is already in place, uh, an attention to the, uh, to the uh, gender policies that has already produced uh, some, some work. Uh, and I think that uh, uh, basically one way to make, it, to make uh, the, 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 the project sustainable is uh, uh, to rely on that institution, in, on that network, uh, as a way to keep uh, what has been produced, uh, spread it, uh, and, uh, uh, and translate it into further actions. So I, I think that uh, we are mature enough uh, to, to say there is a community of institutions, uh, like the departments of computer science, uh, there is a community of professionals, uh, SEM or IEEE, uh, they are uh, already uh, active in that uh, direction. They may benefit uh, of the uh, results of our project. Uh, they may be the main uh, way to make uh, the process uh, not uh, equal IST, but the process uh, sustainable in the, in the, at the long distance. That's my view. So, short comment on that. Um, I do think that these organizations like Informatics Europe or ACM or, the, or others, uh, global organizations are, as you said, very important in this process because they are more stable than certain persons who may come and go and also offer a long-term um, place for store and disseminate these results. One problem is that these organizations are a priori without budget. That means, for example, Informatics Europe does all these efforts from due to the members. We have 120 members or a bit more, um, and the membership fees are not high, but all together comes to some that we uh, are now able also to employ people who are doing, for example, the statistical evaluation of data, which we uh, make accessible to our members, or also um, to support, for example, in smaller context, the uh, workshop like in paying an invited speaker or, but these are all small things. So what would be needed from politics or from um, the sources of money, wherever it is, whether it is industry or, or uh, research um, agencies, that they 
allocate also some money to these purposes and the standard source of money, that you can start something sustainable on the long term without depending on local um, financiation. And this, uh, this is what not yet happened. So we should make, also from the politics, there are great things coming um, to support gender equality, but the main acting, the way of acting is to tell people that they have to do something, right? So more bureaucracy, more uh, must things, but not telling, I give you the chance to do something, here you have some budget, make locally the best out of it what you can. This is missing, not global regulations, but really support. Well, I, I've got the chance to be involved in uh, the, the European Gender Budgeting Network. And I can see that uh, also by analyzing different uh, um, universities in terms of uh, budgeting, gender budgeting, I think it is very important uh, also uh, one point that, that uh, your last intervention pointed out, uh, which in my opinion it is pervasive in Europe and we are approaching election in Europe. We must really ask to our national government to provide enough funds to continue what we have done, and we have seen that it is very powerful from the European level. So this, in my opinion, could be very important, and I think that we should be doing also uh, some uh, work in terms of lobby in, uh, the for in the future European Parliament that I would uh, very much like to be gender sensitive. And uh, uh, in that way, I could see example like, for instance, in Andalusia, where there were uh, projects within the university that were very much gender sensitive in terms of equality in a situation where the region was really uh, having a, a system incentivating actions in the research uh, organization in every institution in the region. So I think there should be uh, both uh, something that maybe in, uh, in network that have been constructed uh, that can have also new idea for new project could apply if there are, and in my opinion, as I, as I could see in uh, different uh, European projects that have been funded and discovered new things to be uh, analyzed and, and, and so ideas for new project, that could be a way. But for something that has been shown to be really very much effective in achieving gender equality, given that our, uh, our national state in Europe as a whole sh uh, has or should have some, uh, in terms of national government, somebody do not really have, but a certain objectives, I think that we should really uh, do something in order to have more funds to make it really structural. For instance, uh, coming from Italy, I can tell you that the equal opportunity officer that is active at district level is, not sim is simply not funded or uh, very poor money. So in this case, what can be uh, the way to go ahead with uh, gender equality and to fight discrimination if we don't have enough uh, uh, way to fight? So say, <coughs> if we discover within an, um, an RPO institution that there are problems of discrimination, what can we really do if we are surrounded with anything? I mean, it is not so bad, the Italian situation, but I would ri like to point it out that in my opinion, uh, the gender equality should be done within the RPOs, in the networking, but also in the context where, where we live, to try really, we are, we should be an example, but we should find, and we <coughs> should like, we, it, it also in Modena, I think we tried to find partners in the society and institutions, and why not also in firms to provide support for our actions. Thank you, Tindara. I, I really think that there is also a, a huge need for uh, lobbying, in a way, at all levels, uh, to try to tackle this uh, resources uh, issue. Uh, what you said uh, recalled, uh, um, reminded me of uh, the, ex the Portuguese experience. Uh, for a few years, they have uh, funded research organizations uh, within, um, uh, for doing uh, gender equality plans within structural funds. So that's also another possible way that 
could be kept in mind for lobbying purposes at the regional levels. It has been worked for a few years. Uh, in that case, it was funding, um, again, organization uh, at an initial stage. Could be rethought for organizations uh, with already promising uh, pra practices and experiences. Uh, and then, um, of course, because it seems, it looks like we are <clears throat> moving uh, the, the, the problem from one uh, level to another, right? We have projects with a sustainability issue. We look at other new projects uh, as opportunities. Partly, there are uh, also limitations in this. Uh, not all the uh, demand will mm, could be covered, I guess, with the capacity building uh, formats and uh, the, the community of, of practices, et cetera, which, are also, which have also limited time frame and funding. But would you have any further comments on all these different inputs <coughs> that we got? Well, I from understand the table. also mm. the, the view of the funding providers that they do not want to give money again to the ones who got already money and that they prefer to direct money to newcomers. That is also a point of view that I can understand. So I think these other kinds of initiatives like the GEAR tool, like the community of practitioners, now the Gender Equality Academy, are other ways of trying to support the community in a more broader way than giving money to particular institutions, which is another policy approach. And you were asking, like, why does it come at the end? I think it comes at the end because it's one of the findings also of the study that we did for the GEAR tool, that these are needs that exist and these were topics that were defined at the end. I don't think they were on purpose placed at the end of the framework program. Mm -hmm. But indeed, there is a huge need for us to, um, to put pressure on the Commission and on the Parliament now also for the, the shaping of Horizon Europe. And Mina was clear this morning, so they are open to it. Maybe we should reflect better on which uh, recommendations we should put forward. And especially towards the um, conference that will take place in Helsinki, that will be a place where we can really like, make it very clear that there are demands and strong expectations from the community of gender experts and practitioners towards the European institutions. So we need mobilization. Thomas, Suzanne, mm -hmm. Jörg, the any further concluding mm -hmm. remarks? Because we are, mm -hmm. we have actually uh, <laughs> used all <laughs> our available time. But please, some concluding remarks from all of you. I mean, it's clear money makes the world go around, <laughs> as always and uh, Brussels must do more. And I guess we have to tell the story uh, again, 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 and in a different way. I mean, let's face it, all these GEP developing projects, at the end we will have, uh, Brussels has funded 100 uh, gender equality plans. Uh, for me, this is uh, just a side issue. Uh, it's much more important that uh, these consortia have formed, have come together, and address gender equality together. We had meetings, for example, in, in Poland uh, where security personnel had to protect us from right-wing activists. So such uh, experiences uh, you will never forget uh, that uh, in some countries gender equality uh, it's uh, quite common. In others, it's uh, something that has a really political dimension where we see all these nationalistic streams running through Europe. And uh, when you read newspapers, you see uh, this change between uh, feminist articles, sexist articles, and uh, then gender equality. Oh, um, this is things we are all facing uh, and this becomes more and more extreme in the coming uh, years if we don't steer against it and that's why it's important to have this uh, consortia of activists that are going against it and try to convince colleagues uh, to yeah, 
participate in this. So Brussels must spend more. There's a u clear European added value, and uh, this is what I have in mind. They, they must come out with some, some bigger, uh, just the gender equality plans, and here an academy, and there a gear tool, and I get... When I talk to my people in my institute, they don't know that IG exists. <laughs> so <laughs> first is uh, ask around or uh, informatics uh, colleagues, uh, do they know about it? No, of course not. <laughs> Why <should>? yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Thomas. Yeah. Su Susan? Uh, I, I think so from my personal point of view, it's, uh, yes, I, I would fully confirm your, your uh, suggestion so to, to uh, mobilize uh, the, the community. But furthermore, I, I'm so absolutely convinced that it's important to lead the silo. So, so the gender community should not stay within the gender community only, but has really to convince the people outside. And I, I think there is chance <laughs> to show that diversity has numerous benefits for, for all parts of a company, of an organization, of a university. And not only, or gender equality is not only for the sake of, of, of women. Uh, so it's really for the whole staff. And I think that this is an approach which is mm. extremely important to ensure sustainability of your topics. <laughs> Thank Thanks you. a lot. <laughs> Jörg? Mm -hmm. no, I, I just uh, I want mm -hmm. to sup subscribe as well what uh, Thomas said, really. And this is actually one of the outcome of the community mapping that we did, where we asked all the people in Europe uh, working in, on gender equality. You see really very nice, uh, we ask people with whom do you cooperate and you see a really an extensive and impressive networks of people that are working together and I think this is something we should first become aware of and then really try to take advantage of for what's coming next the end of this week I think is the election no? <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's really close thank you very much uh, for your uh, uh, participation uh, and contribution. Thanks also to all the uh, uh, audience. Uh, I think we can just close the conference. Uh, it was very interesting and I would give the floor to um, our project coordinator, Vasiliki Munzi, for a final awarding ceremony of the advisory board members. So, Thank actually, you. Uh,